поговорим о мужчинах в браке. And of course, we've already said that one of the things that uh, that men need is respect. Мы уже сами говорили об одном, что очень сильно нужно мужчинам, а именно об уважении. Now I'm having Jenny write some stuff up here. We'll come to it in a little bit. Пока что Женя пишет, вы не сильно обращаете внимание. Это на потом. Вот мы потом обратимся к этому списку. Нам просто полезно будет иметь его на доске. Now, uh, well, no, it's just men. You know that that was what we said was in the Ephesians five. And part of what I'm going to say before we actually get into what men need. Но пока мы начнем перечислять следующий список, который у нас будет потребности мужчин. It's more just kind of an introduction of some of this. Я сначала хочу дать небольшой такой вводный материал. Because many men today uh, in our society and seems to be growing is that many of them are emotional infants who are still in their boyhood. More and more men today are living longer periods of time with their parents before they get married. That's especially true in America. And probably you're going to be observing it and noticing it happening here as well. For several reasons. But statistics show now that 48% of the males in our society play video games at least three hours a day. And one of the things that it's doing is it's helping to keep them into their childhood. Paul makes a statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I no longer used my childish ways. But the average today, video game buyer, is 37 years old. 10 million American men live with unmarried partners. $3,000 is spent on pornography every second. Every 39 minutes, a new pornographic video is created somewhere in the United States. Two women are raped every minute. Каждую минуту насилуют двух женщин. Two thousand rapes each day. Каждый день примера в насилии над женщинам двадцать two hundred двести двести насилие. Two thousand rapes each day. Две тысячи извините. Almost a million a year. Почти миллион насилий без насилования в год. And they say that one out of three women will be sexually assaulted in her lifetime. We have a lot of social problems in our world. And one of the things, men, we need to recognize 
is that there is an epidemic of useless men in our world. It may be due to pornography, it may be due to uh, drugs, alcohol, Whatever. But it's very sad to see this happening to our society. Now, I recognize that this has been a problem throughout the history of the world. I mean, even when you look into Genesis chapter you know, six. You know, the, the, the world was rampant in sin. And in, in uh, Abraham's day, you had Sodom and Gomorrah. So, in nearly all societies, there has been this problem. The real problem, through it all, is sin and people being unwilling to repent of that sin. But it always creates a problem in our society. And here's something else our men need to know. And that is godly women are attracted to men who are godly. And so it's very important for us as Christians to be a godly man. And with that to help our, our women. I was one time in Russia and I was talking to some women there. At a seminar that we were doing. And I asked them, I said, what are you looking for in a man? Well, I was looking for an answer like, uh, well, if I, you know, a, a good man who would love me and provide for me. No, I mean, if I had been, in, it wasn't a Christian audience, so that I was dealing with, so. You know, but that's what I thought I would hear, especially if it was Christian women. <coughs> Out of that group of women, the two top things were he doesn't drink too much. And he doesn't beat me. What does it say about men? You see, there, there should be stages within a man's life. And let me give you some of the stages that that should be happening within men's lives. First, men should go through boyhood. And during, in their boyhood, when they're small, they should be learning what it is to be a man. They, or I wish it was this way, they would be observing a godly father who is a good, real man. And, and they're watching other men in the church who are godly men and looking up to them, admiring them, learning what a real man is. 
берет мне в пример, он изучает их, и он понимает на их примере, что значит быть настоящим мужчиной. And then as they grow a little bit older, we'll say, say around uh, 12 to 15, 16 years old, they, they should go through a stage that I call the cowboy stage. Okay. Now, let me illustrate what I mean by this. Yeah, first one is boyhood, second is cowboy. Uh, used to be, many years ago, there would be lots and lots and lots of cowboy shows on On television. In America. You've probably even seen some of them. Over here in the States. Put on over here. Well, in the old movies, it was just a, a practical thing about cowboys that if one cowboy said something nasty to a woman, they'd get their head knocked off. И вот э, в старых фильмах про ковбоев э, вот такое было всегда ну, правило, это само собой полагалось, что если кто-то из ковбоев позволял себе оскорбить женщину, ему не сдобровать. Ну, конечно, если ковбои сами по себе были на ранчо, между собой общались, ну, понятно, там всякие слова проскальзывали, выражения. Woman, Но если ковбой находился в присутствии женщины, если друг бы они оскорбили женщину, другие ковбои обязательно бы за нее заступили. So То есть ковбои учились женщин уважать. Well, так вот, именно в подростковом возрасте мальчики этому учатся. They should be learning to respect women. Они особенно учатся уважать женщин. When they're seven or eight years old, the boys. Когда мальчикам семь, восемь лет, мальчишкам. Oh, have you got a girlfriend? Попробуйте не спросить. У тебя есть подружка? У тебя есть девочка? Yeah. Какие девочки? You know. But as they grow a little older. They're beginning to notice. But that's the time in life that they learn to respect. And then as they get a little bit older than that, then they begin to be the warrior. Ah, let's go out and go hunting with our dads. So, is that number three? Or that's three? number three. Yeah, the warrior is number three. Of which age? Uh, it's, it's about relative, but it's, uh, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And <coughs> like even in a lot of societies, a lot of natives, for example, in, in Africa, And that's the basic age that they'll teach their young men to be warriors. They, they learn how to hunt. They learn how to protect their tribe. So, they, they learn to be warriors. Then, of course, as a young man gets a little bit older than that, and again, the range will vary. It could be 17 to 24. He learns to be the lover. He notices the ladies. And so he combs his hair. Shaves his whiskers. Excuse me. 
Mit äh, Warren's the top. <laughs> Learns to talk nice to them. Wants to impress them that he's tough, but he's tender. And then after he finds a wife and marries her, then he becomes the king. The stage of the king. Mm -hmm, the stage of the king. And as he learns to lead his family, he begins to have children and he begins to start training them through these stages. Он начинает детей воспитывать, чтобы они постепенно проходили все эти стадии в жизни. And he learns to fight for the people that are around him. Он начинает сражаться за своих близких, родных. Uh, look at a passage in Nehemiah chapter 4. Посмотрите, пожалуйста, в Неемию 4 главу. Nehemiah chapter 4, 13 and 14. 13 и 14 стих. Тогда в низменных местах у города за стеной на местах сухих поставил я народ по племенно с мечами, с копиями их и с луками. И осмотрел я и стал, и сказал знатнейшим, и начальствующим, и прочему народу, не бойтесь их, помните этого великого и страшного, и сражайтесь за братьев своих, за сыновей своих, за дочерей своих, за жен своих и за домы своих. Okay, notice that he put the stronger men out in front of the wall, had the families behind the wall. And told them to fight for their brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. He was teaching them to, here's the way to lead in this situation where we've got a battle to be he was in the midst of rebuilding. And he had a lot of opposition. And so men come to the point in their lives where they realize I, I have a responsibility to my wife, I have a responsibility to my children. To be their king. Figuratively, okay. But to be their king. To protect them, to lead them, to help my children to grow. And this one lasts a long time for a man's life. And then he gets into his 60s, 70s. It could go back to the 50s, you know, 50s to 70s, 80s. When the last part of his life, he goes into a state of his life called the sage, the sage, uh, the elder at the gates, the wise man. So he's, he begins to, that at that point, be more interested in wisdom. That's when a lot of men become elders in the church. He tries to be a worthy man who can give good advice to younger men. And he tries to really... Uh, be spiritually engaged with people. Now, in our society, we see that happening sometimes, but too often we don't. You know, in our society, we see how it happens. 
мужчины переживают эту стадию, но иногда этого нет. We see too many times where men abdicate their responsibility. Слишком часто мы видим, как мужчины пренебрегают своими обязанностями. They don't become the the leaders, the sage, the, the king that they need to be. They don't want to take responsibility. I think that was true of Adam and Eve when you look at the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 verse 6. Adam was with Eve. The Bible suggests that when, when she was being tempted. And a lot of times we put the most blame on Eve. But why did Adam remain silent? Why didn't he step up and take the responsibility and say, no, this is wrong? We will serve the Lord. And then you notice that when they, when God starts walking through the garden, and Adam and Eve are hiding from God, what does God say? Where are you, Adam? No, she didn't say, where are you, Eve? He saw Adam as the one who should have been the responsible person in the family. So, women, how can we help our men to become that kind of leader in our home? Well, here's some of his needs that involve respect. No. This is kind of a major theme, just saying, here are some things, here, here's going to be uh, five or six things that, that men need. First of all, we need to help, women need to help their men feel good about being the conqueror. Men are built to achieve, to work, to cultivate the garden. And the woman needs to say, I'm proud of you. Much more than I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm, I'm proud of the way you lead in our family. I'm proud of the way that you lead a church. You did a great job working on the uh, waiting on the Lord's table today. Or your prayer was very meaningful to me. Or I, I, I loved your sermon. I'm so thankful the way and proud of you for the way you're working with our children. I mean, boy, men like that. Okay, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to do better. <laughs> it makes us feel good. And it makes us want to do more. Now, here's why I put up this chart. И вот теперь объясню, для чего нам вот эта таблица. You see some words over on Видите, the left hand, the left hand side, колонка. some on the right hand side. И есть с правой стороны колонка. Okay. These are more words that Справа у нас <coughs> really are more fitting for women. Это то, что больше подходит и нужно для женщин. You know, these are, these, but these are the ones that are predominantly talked about in church. 
Но если мы честно скажем, то в церкви в основном проповеди и уроки идут по правой колонке. Words like competence, а такие слова как компетентность, власть, эффективность, achievement, достижение, skills, умение, proving oneself, состоятельность, results, результаты, accomplishment, ну, достижение или тоже вот, uh, цели. You know, and you're going down the list. <coughs> These are the words that really fit men more. This list came out of a book. And it's a, it's a great book. It's called Men are from Mars, Women are from Venus. Well, <laughs> Here's what the Mars guys need. <laughs> And here's what the Venus women need. You know, so these are really, you know, again, more men's and women's needs. But if you look at this side, where we talk about love and communication, beauty, relationships, that is the majority of the language we use in the church. And I'm just going to point out an observation that I've had through the years. Because we concentrate on this side, there's a little wonder why there are usually more women in the church than men. Because maybe we aren't challenging the men. And men are inspired by risk. They're inspired by doing something. Most men, not all, but most men, get their self-esteem from their work. I mean, if they're doing good at work, they feel good about themselves. If they're accomplishing something, feel good about myself. If I'm getting results in my work, feel good about myself. Whereas women, on the other hand, greatly receive their self-esteem from this list. So I think we need to be aware of that in the church. As well as in our husband-wife relationship. So, the first way that a man, you know, is going to be helped by his wife is for him, for her, to look at him as the conqueror. And be proud of what he's doing as a man. Secondly, the second thing that women need to give to their husbands or help their husbands with, and that's what I call hierarchy. When Paul says, women submit to your husbands, your wives submit to your husbands, he was expressing there a real need. Women who wear the pants in their family do damage to their husbands. Now, sometimes women are forced to take the lead because men don't do it. Now, 
быть главным в семье. But Christian women, we really need to encourage our Но men, our husbands, to take the lead. всячески ободрять, подталкивать мужа к тому, чтобы он взял на себя главенствующую роль. Don't be afraid of saying that I am willing to submit to you, I want to submit to you, because that's what God wants you to do. Я хочу быть тебе послушным. Я хочу повиноваться тебе, потому что Бог этого хочет. Christian women should not be afraid of not being on a totally equal surface to men. Because that's the way God made us. And he knew that it was important for a man to take the lead. There's been some great women through the Bible. One of them I think of is a judge named Deborah. Yeah. And you wonder, well, why, why, did, why did, was she made a judge? Now this is partly speculation, but I think it's partly because men didn't do the job. Вы знаете, конечно, я понимаю, что это может быть частично мои догадки, но мне кажется, что она стала судьей, потому что никто из мужчин этого не хотел. And men, if we abdicate our responsibility, we will end up forcing our wives to take over. And that's not healthy for your family, nor is it healthy for the church. Okay. Third thing. I call authority. Part of this is reflected through the Proverbs. When you read the Proverbs, invariably he will address the women first. Because often there's a real problem with women. Being destructive to the home. For example, Proverbs 21, verse 9. Proverbs 21, verse 9. Better to live on a corner of a roof than to share a home with a quarreling woman. <laughs> Proverbs 21, 19. Better to live in a desert than with a quarreling and angry woman. Proverbs 27, verse 15. Constantly dripping water on a rainy day is like a quarreling woman. When the woman is always negative, always quarreling, always nagging, men will, again, abdicate their authority. They don't feel like being men. So, women, you can really contribute to helping your husband. Don't be that quarreling woman. Don't be that angry woman. Recognize your husband's authority. Encourage your husband's authority. I have always appreciated Mary Lee in this. She's already always wanted me to be the primary one that led in prayer in her home. Now, my, I love it when she prays too. But she kind of pushes me ahead. 
на меня это возлагает. То есть это ее желание, чтобы я вел всеми. То есть она хочет, чтобы в этом я действительно вел ее за собой. То есть она хочет, чтобы власть была в моих руках. I usually consult her when we're making major decisions. Конечно, когда мы в семье принимаем какие-то важные решения, я всегда с ней советую. Says, Но она практически всегда говорит, я так думаю, decision. но решение принимать тебе. Kind of say, Кстати, я никогда не был таким мужчиной, чтобы сказать своей жене, так, женщина, ты молчи. Я так решил, так и будет. I like for her to be a part Нет, of that. я люблю вместе принимать решения. Но, time, Но, с другой стороны, я всегда очень благодарен, что она хоть и вносит свой вклад, да, но хочет, чтобы я как бы, брал на себя вот это руководящее положение. Women, well. Вот женщины, христианки, я вас прошу в своих общинах Ведите себя так, чтобы поощрять мужчин к лидерству. When I was living in Canada and doing work there, we had a lady that came to the church there and started visiting. Мы когда жили в Канаде, когда я там проповедовал, однажды нашу общину пришла женщина, и мы с ней начали беседу. I began to talk with her, find out a little bit about her, who she was, and so forth. Я с ней поговорила, чтобы познакомиться, узнать, кто она, откуда. Found out that she had been going to a Pentecostal church just down the road. То она до этого посещала церковь пятидесятника буквально через дорогу от нас. And after a few weeks at Delta, она походила к нам буквально пару недель в нашу общину Дельте. She said, "You just don't know how glad I am to see what's going on here." И она мне после этого сказала, "Знаете, я так рада видеть, что у вас здесь происходит." And I said, "What?" Я говорю, "Что что именно у нас происходит?" She said. I see so many. I see your men taking the lead. And she said, "That's why I'm one of the reasons why I'm looking." Said. At the church where I've been going. The women have taken over. And the men just sit back and do nothing. And she said, "I don't think that's right." And so she was very happy to find a place where the men were willing to take the lead. She loved him. She had a son that was a neat guy. Her son uh, was just a teenager, teenager when she started coming to the church. <coughs> And he loved to ride a skateboard. And every Sunday, he would ride his skateboard to church. And he usually had on kind of skateboard clothes. They were a little raggedy. But when he got there, well, he'd pick up his skateboard, put it under his arm, and come on in. Но он на скейт я приезжал только к церкви, как к зданию подходил, скейт под мышку и вперед. It was really neat to this last time that Mary and I were back in Canada. Что интересно, что последнюю нашу поездку в Канаде, когда мы с Мэри там были, we uh, we ended up uh, needing to get our wills redone. Нам нужно было переписать завещание. And I looked up somebody to do this and. Found his name. And so I went to him. He's, he, he's a notary, and so he read, redid our wills for us. He was delighted to see us again. He hadn't seen us in several years. But anyway, I think that's important for women to push the men on out to encourage their authority. Okay, the fourth thing. <coughs> Men need to be appreciated for their insight. Мужчинам очень важно, чтобы их ценили за их, ну как бы мудрость. Они, ну как бы, мужчины любят считать себя умными, чтобы говорили, что они умные. Men love to solve problems. Потому что мужчины очень любят решать проблемы. Hey, women, humor him. Let him solve problems. 
И вот женщины, дайте мужчине проблему, чтобы он ее решил. If you knock him down right away, you'll damage him. Знаете, если вы сразу его вышибите из этой как бы, вот, проблемы, сами на себя возьмете, вы ну, ему не поможете. So, and, and, and it's funny, that's another one of the differences between men and women. Uh, men really like to be sol problem solvers. They like to fix things. So, let him fix things. Now, men need to remember something else too. It's good for you to fix things. Хорошо, что вы что-то исправляете, решаете. But it's not always wise to try to fix your wife. Но только жену не пытайтесь исправить. Это не всегда мудрое решение. Okay. And men have a tendency to do that kind of thing. Знаете, мужчины очень к этому склонны, стараться yeah. постоянно исправить свою жену. Well, the wife is sitting there. Oh, you know, I'm worried about uh, this, and I'm worried about that, and I'm worried about this, you know. And so the husband just needs to sit there and listen to her talk about the things she's concerned about. But most men like to fix it. And so they'll say, Well, you know, the Bible tells us that we're not to worry. So you just stop worrying. <laughs> ah, and then he thinks, it's fixed. <laughs> He's real proud of himself. He fixed it. But she's still struggling with the problems. So, be careful. <laughs> the way you handle each other on that. And women, don't be the Holy Spirit to him. <laughs> Always reminding him of his sin. <laughs> no, that's, that's in with the idea of <laughs> insight. You know. Now here's number five. It's relationship. <coughs> Women need to be shoulder to shoulder and arm in arm with their husband. Now, one of the things that Mary Lee and I have tried to do in our relationship is she's always liked to try to do things that I like to do. And I have really appreciated that. As she was growing up in her home, her father loved to sit on Saturday and watch all the different college football games. And Mary Lee wouldn't get to see some of her favorite programs. So she got to kind of resent football. But when we got married, I was not into football the way her dad was. I did like, when I could, to watch my favorite football team, the Dallas Cowboys. And uh, so she knew nothing about football and could care less about football. But we are also living in a small community where every Friday night during the fall, 
Каждый, да, каждый, да. Каждую, каждую пятницу вечер осенью. Everybody in the community went to the high school football game. Все ходили в местную школу на uh, футбольную игру и там играли старшеклассники. So I was so proud of her. She would go with me. И я ей так гордился. Она всегда со мной туда ходила. And she would sit there and she would say, what are they doing now? What was that all about? <laughs> and I would help her understand <laughs> it. People around her would try to help her understand it. <laughs> and she started learning <laughs> about football. Well, then on Sunday afternoon, if after church, we would... Uh, if we could watch the cowboy game, we would. And she would sit there and watch it with me. And again, it was, well, what are they doing now? Uh, uh, what, what kind of play was that? And so she kept... You know, trying to understand Well, through the years, she's watched a lot of cowboy games. And they will be doing just great. And I'll be sitting there, yay, yay. And Mary Lee will be going, yay, go cowboys! <laughs> Well, you know what? I love it. You know. But you see, she was trying to build this shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder relationship with me. Trying to appreciate and like what I want. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, this thing also can happen in reverse and should happen in reverse. Но я мужчинам хочу сказать, это может происходить и наоборот. Более того, это должно происходить и в, опра... и в другом направлении. Мэри Ли с мамой обожали ходить по магазинам. And they would go shopping for hours. <laughs> Most men have the idea, okay, here's shopping. I know what I want. Мне нужно магазин. А как мы ходим по магазинам? Я знаю, что мне надо купить. Я иду в магазин к этому товару. Я его беру, расплачиваюсь и все, мои покупки закончены. Женщины, вы бы меня полюбили. Я хожу с Марили. And would shop and shop. And shop. I would look at all kinds of things. Uh -huh. And she now says, J. Don can shop more than me. Uh, when I went to Omsk, Siberia, you know, under the uh, the old Soviet system, you you would go to all these stores and you wouldn't know what's on the inside of them, other than just a name. Well, I would teach all week. And then maybe on Saturday I'd kind of take a day off. I would go door to door, door to door. Might not buy a thing, but I would look. I was curious as to what they had to sell. You know. And some of the missionaries there would then say, well, you know, I wish somebody coming from the States would buy me such and such. Because we, we don't have it here in Alms. And I'd say, oh yes we do. It's down at such and such store. You know, that's the idea of it. <laughs> so, but I, I just enjoy going and looking at it. may not buy a thing. But Mary Lee loves it. So, that's what I mean by relationship. 
If your husband likes to sit down and watch TV, don't fold the clothes. Не нужно в это время раскладывать вещи в шифонере. Sit down and watch TV, buddy. А позже разложите вещи в шкафу. Keep your relationship good. Работайте над вот этими отношениями. You know, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm kidding to some degree, because конечно. sometimes you can watch TV and fold clothes too. Ну, конечно, вы понимаете, да, что в какой-то степени я, может быть, и шучу, можно иногда телевизор смотреть и вещи раскладывать, конечно. But at the same time, what I'm really saying Но, is... что я пытаюсь сказать? Make sure he knows that you love doing some things he loves to do. You may not understand it, but it's companionship. So, you see, man needed companionship. That's one of the reasons why Eve was created. In Titus chapter 2 verse 4, it says in this way they will teach young women to show love to their husbands and children. The word that's used there in the Greek is phileo. Which it's saying they will teach the young women to show love like a friend. So, love your husband like a friend. My best friend is Mary Lee. She frequently will send me cards at special occasions, usually. Nearly always she will write it to my best friend. I like that. You know, that, that encourages me. Because it expresses this relationship, this companionship that I need. Okay, the sixth one is intimacy. Intimacy. This is the last one. This is the last one. Um, at the same translation of just closeness. Like closeness. Closeness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can mean that. Mm -hmm. But the way I'm using it, I'm talking about sexual fulfillment. Okay. And if you want to put it that way, Women, you've got to understand something about men. And Probably many of you do know this. The need for sexual fulfillment is engraved in us by God. Now, women need it as well, but it's not quite usually as intense as in men. У большинства, у женщин, у всех женщин, это тоже есть, да, это желание. Но, как правило, желание сексуальных, близких, интимных отношений сильнее выражено у мужчин. Now, 1 Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. 1 Коринфянам 7 глава, с 1 по 5 стих. Speaks about this. Как раз об этом говорится. Now, in the older versions in the English language, they kind of tried to hide the, the wording here a little bit. It really wasn't as strong as it really is in the Greek. And, uh, I don't know how it does it in the Rus Russian version. What does it say? In the Russian version. Well, let's say, um, 
Yeah. They probably did try to do the same. Well, you can read from Verse 3, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, that's very vague. Very vague. Okay. 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 And in the in the English, old English versions, it's that way too. Very thick. Part of the reason was because some of those versions were written uh, during a time whenever they were oh, it was very bad to talk about sex in any way. So instead of really translating it the way it should have been. Let's kind of hide. You know, we don't want to talk about sex. But now then, uh, this I'm going to I'm going to read it from this one. I'm just going to have you translate. This is from a fairly modern version in English. But it's a very, very good translation. I mean, it tries not to hide those kind of things. You know, sort of like the word baptism. Baptism was an English word, kind of made out of a, a, a Greek word. Baptizo. Baptizo означает погружение, но чтобы не переводить на английский, они придумали слово baptism. Well, this one actually translates it right. Uh -huh. It says in this English word, immersion. So it, it, it translates it right in that sense. So, listen to me as I read and Давайте, Natasha will just translate it as this. You have already written to me about marriage. It is commendable for a man not to marry. However, there is so much sexual sin everywhere. So each man should be married and each woman should be married. The husband should satisfy his wife sexually. In the same way, the wife should satisfy her husband's sexual needs. The wife does not own her own body. It belongs to her husband. And the husband does not, does not own his body. His wife does. Don't cheat one another of sex. You may agree to stop for a while so that you may pray to God more. Вы можете по общему согласию на какое-то время воздерживаться, чтобы больше молиться Богу. But after that, you should come together again. Но после этого вы должны снова быть вместе. Otherwise, Satan might tempt you through not having enough self-control. Иначе сатана вас может искусить не воздержание. Now he goes ahead to explain in the passage that one of the reasons why he's saying this might not be good for people to marry is because of the present situation But the reason I wanted to read, read, read it out of this, uh, and that sixth situation was in, in evidently in a time of persecution. <coughs> but I wanted to read it out of this one because I wanted to understand that it's actually talking about the sexual relationship. And it is saying that a wife needs to give sex to her husband and the husband to his wife. This is something God designed. It's good. It's beautiful in the marriage relationship. And it's not right to withhold it from each other.
So, and that's a, a, a big need within men. Intimacy or sexual fulfillment. So, let's make sure we build our homes and our foundations on God's principles. All right. When we come back from the break, we're going to talk more about sex and marriage.